Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're looking way, way out there beyond the usual planets because uh, the sources you shared point to something really quite rare. Yeah, it's pretty exciting, a sort of astronomical alignment that's got people talking. A celestial triple header, actually. We've got three significant comets all converging in our cosmic neighborhood around the same time. It's giving scientists and, well, anyone looking up, a really unique chance to see something special. That's the core of it. Our mission today, really, is to unpack where these three visitors came from and, you know, why having them all here together is such a big deal scientifically. Right. So the sources focus on these three specifically. 3 I Lass, C2025 A6 Lemon, and C2025 R2 Swan. Correct. And the central finding, really, is that the timing and how close they are suggests, well, first, a potentially spectacular show for observers, but maybe more importantly, a major scientific opportunity. And I think what grabs you immediately, what caught my eye anyway, is the chance of meteor showers, like actual meteor showers from Earth potentially hitting the tails of these comets. That's definitely one of the most immediate and uh, exciting possibilities. Okay, so let's maybe take them one by one. Look at these visitors individually. Their origins sound like they're all over the map, astronomically speaking. They really are. Let's start with 3 I Alice. That name itself tells you something crucial. Ah, I noticed that difference. One I and two Cs. That's intentional, right? Absolutely. It's fundamental. The C for Lemon and Swan tells us they are comets from our own solar system. Long period ones probably flung in from the, uh, the Oort cloud way out there. They orbit our sun, even if it takes centuries or millennia. Okay, our locals, sort of. Right, but that ion in 3i Atlas, that officially marks it as interstellar. Meaning not from around here at all. Exactly, not bound to our sun. It originated around a completely different star and is just what passing through. It's an alien visitor. Wow. Okay, so an actual object from another star system showing up at the same time as two of our own sort of deep space comets. Precisely, yeah. And ATLA is... Well, scientifically, it's the biggest prize because it's truly foreign material. The sources, NASA Science included, confirm it's only the third officially recognized interstellar object we've ever tracked. The third one ever. So it's a chance to study the building blocks of another star system up close. That's the hope. It's like a sample delivery from elsewhere in the galaxy right into our observational range. Do we know its path? Is it coming close to Earth? Not super close to Earth, no. These interstellar objects tend to have quite different trajectories. Yeah. But we have a good fix on it. NASA confirms it'll make a close approach to Mars. Mars, okay. Yeah, around October 3rd, 2025. That gives astronomers a really specific point in time and space to aim their instruments. They know exactly where this thing will be. Got it. Okay, so that's the interstellar guess. Now, what about C2025 A6 Lemon? You said it's one of ours, but still pretty special. Oh, Lemon is special in a completely different way. It teaches us about deep time. Its orbital period is just staggering. How long are we talking? The sources estimate it's around 350 years. 1,350 years to go around the sun once. Oh, okay, 1,350 years, so the last time it swung by. We'd be talking about the 7th century AD. Think about that. The world was completely different. That really puts long-term into perspective. Scientifically, though, why does that huge orbit matter? Is it different from, say, Halley's Comet coming back every 70-odd years? It matters a lot. Comets are basically, you know, dirty snowballs ice, dust, rock. Every time they get close to the sun, the heat vaporizes some of that ice, blows off dust, it gets processed. Right, it loses material. Exactly. A comet like Halley's that comes around often is heavily processed. It's lost a lot of its original volatile stuff. But Lemon, spending 1,300 years way out in the cold. It spent almost its entire existence in the deep freeze of the outer solar system. It's likely much closer to its original state, much more pristine. So it's like a time capsule from the early solar system. Pretty much. It's a rare chance to study material that's almost unchanged since the planets first formed. A once in a millennium opportunity, really. Okay, interstellar Atlas, ancient lemon, and the third one, C2025 R2, Swan. This one's a surprise guest, isn't it? Totally. Swan is brand new on the scene. It was only just discovered September 11th, 2025, literally weeks ago. So we barely know it's coming. Right. It's a last minute addition. But what's cool about Swan, based on some chatter, like in that Skywatch signal thread, is its potential visibility. It might actually get bright enough to see with binoculars. Oh, really? So this whole event might be something even casual observers can get involved with. That seems to be the hope, at least for Swan, making this triple alignment a bit more accessible. But hold on, if Swan was only found this month, how can they be so sure about its path? 
predicting a meteor shower, you mentioned that possibility just, what, two weeks from now? That feels fast. That's a fair point. With newly discovered comets, the orbit isn't as locked down as with something like Lemon. But um, the initial observations must have been pretty good. It's brightness and apparent trajectory. Okay. It seems to be moving quickly, and the initial calculations, while maybe having some margin of error, are reliable enough to predict that Earth will cross through its dust stream. The fact it's happening so soon after discovery is actually why the prediction is possible. Ah, I see. Okay, so let's put them all together now. Atellus, Lemon, Swan. The trajectory stuff suggests they're all going to be relatively close around the same time. Yes, a rare proximity event. And that brings us back to the meteor showers. You mentioned Perth might hit the tails. Explain that a bit more. What are these tails made of? Well, like we said, the sun heats the comet, vaporizing ice and freeing up dust and gas. This streams away from the comet, pushed by sunlight and the solar wind, forming the tail or often two tails, one dust, one ion. And if Earth flies through that? That stream of dust particles hits our atmosphere at high speed. They burn up. And that's what we see as meteors, or shooting stars. A meteor shower. And the sources are pointing at Swan first for this. The analysis for Swan is pretty specific. Yeah? Yeah. Earth is expected to pass through its dust tail around October 5th, 2025. Which is interesting timing. How so? Because that's just two days after Atlas makes its closest pass by Mars on October 3rd. Things are happening fast. Wow, okay. But the really wild part, the thing that makes this more than just a nice light show, is the hint that we might hit two tails, not just Swan, but Lemon too. That's the kicker, yes. The trajectory models suggest Earth might pass through the debris streams of both Swan and Lemon in a relatively short period. Both of them. That sounds... Unusual. Extremely unusual. A double meteor shower event, or at least passing through both streams close together, that really elevates the scientific potential here. Okay, why? Why is hitting two different comet tails close together so much more valuable scientifically? I mean, more meteors is cool, but... It's about comparison. Think about what we said about lemon. It's ancient, pristine material, right, from the deep freeze. 4,350-year orbit. Right, the time capsule. Exactly. Swan, on the other hand, is newly discovered. Its orbit might be shorter, or maybe it's just shedding material differently. It represents a potentially uh, younger or maybe just differently processed sample of outer solar system stuff. So you get dust from the ancient comet and dust from the newer one raining down almost at the same time. Precisely. It's like opening two different time capsules side by side. Astronomers can analyze the light from the meteors, maybe even collect micrometeorites if we're lucky, and compare them directly. Compare what exactly? Things like uh, the ratio of different elements, the types of ices that seem to be burning off, maybe complex organic molecules. Is lemon's dust richer in certain volatile compounds that maybe Swan has lost over time due to more frequent sun exposure? Ah, so comparing them helps you understand how solar system material ages or changes over time. Exactly. It lets us characterize the building blocks of our own solar system in a much more nuanced way. We get a baseline for ancient versus more recent Oort cloud material. Okay, that makes sense. But now, loop back to Atlas, the interstellar one. How does it fit into this comparison between Lemon and Swan? It's not from our system at all. That's where it gets really profound. You need a good baseline to understand something truly alien, right? Sure. By studying Lemon, ancient local, and Swan, newer local, together, we establish that really solid baseline for our solar system's chemistry. We understand the variations within our system better than ever before. And then you look at ATLS. And then you look at whatever data we can get from ATLS, maybe spectral analysis of its coma, the gas cloud around it, and you can say with much more confidence, okay, this specific element ratio or this type of molecule we see in ATLS is genuinely different from what our own comets look like, both the old ones and the newer ones. So the alignment isn't just three cool things happening nearby. They actually work together scientifically. Absolutely. It provides context. It lets us potentially isolate what's truly unique about interstellar material versus the stuff that formed around our own sun. It's comparative astrochemistry on a grand scale. So to sum it up for you, the listener, we've got this incredible convergence, an alien object, an ancient relic from our own deep past, and a brand new discovery all arriving in the same window. And the possibility of Earth interacting directly with the dust from two of them 
creating potentially unique meteor showers around early October. It's definitely shaping up to be a spectacular display, but as you said, it's also a huge scientific opportunity, a gold rush for data about where we and maybe others came from. Yeah, putting it all together, the interstellar object, the 1350-year comet, the new discovery, the double meteor shower potential, it's a really significant moment. It's like getting samples delivered from the edge of our system and beyond all at once. Which leaves us with a final thought for you to chew on. If this alignment lets us compare ancient solar system dust, lemon, with newer dust, swan, and we use the interstellar object Atelier as the ultimate outsider comparison, what specific questions about how solar systems form could we finally start to answer? Right. When you have samples from inside and outside showing up together, what does that tell us about whether the basic ingredients for stars and planets are universal, or if every stellar neighborhood has its own unique chemical flavor? Something to think about? Keep looking up and keep exploring.